Um, so thanks for joining us today. Um, as you know, we've put this series of expert sessions to support you during this ongoing time. And we hope that you find today's session and the others that you uh, have attended or may attend uh, useful uh, as a mental pro. Um, I'd really like to thank uh, Patagonia and Hornware uh, for uh, supporting us with today's session. And I'll, I'll introduce the speakers really shortly. Um, if we can just go on to the next slide around etiquette, I'm sure loads of you are um, uh, familiar with this by now. And I would love to now introduce, uh, we have two speakers this morning. We have Becky, uh, Becky from Patagonia. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And um, who's going to start the session. And then we hand over to the expert here, Martina, who's going to tell us all about uh, the expertise. So over to um, Becky and then Martina. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Cressida. Um, I quite like Becky T as well. I think I might, um, I think I might adopt that. I think it's, <laughs> it's a nice name. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, um, I'm Becky. I work for Patagonia here in the UK. Um, I am the UK Enviro and Marketing Assistant. Um, I've been doing this role for about three years now, um, but have been with Patagonia for coming up six years, actually. Um, I started off in customer service. Um, I am really not, not the ex expert at all here, Martina definitely is, but um, I'm here to kind of be a voice for Patagonia and um, just give you a little bit of a, a brief um, background about us as a brand. I'm sure many of you are actually aware of us anyway, but also um, just give you a bit of background about our warmer project as well, which is how we, we know Martina. Um, so like I say, many of you are probably familiar with Patagonia as a brand, but for those of you who might not be, we were founded in 1973 by a chap called Yvonne Chouinard. Um, who is on the right there. That's an old picture of Yvonne. Um, he does, actually doesn't look that much older than that these days. He's, um, I don't know what his secret is, but uh, <laughs> he founded the brand in, um, in California in a place called Ventura, which is actually where our global headquarters are still based. Um, Patagonia as a brand, actually, I don't know if many people know this, but actually has quite a strong link to the UK climbing scene. So Yvonne came over here um, in the early 70s, and that was kind of how he started thinking about the clean climbing process. So um, that is kind of where the climbing gear that we see today, that and that Yvonne was part of, of building that model of climbing. Um, he he had the idea for that here in the UK um, and actually the the brand the clothing brand um, it comes from the fact that Yvonne was in Scotland came across some rugby shirts and was like these are great for climbing in because at the time they were that really heavy thick material and he realized it was fantastic um, and when you're climbing it, it um, handled abrasion and that was kind of where it started so actually the UK has a lot to do with, with us as a brand in our history. Um, environmentalism has been key to our brand from the start. The whole reason that Yvonne and his friends came up with the idea of clean climbing and like I say, the modern day gear that we have now is because Yvonne could see the damage that traditional climbing techniques at the time were, were having on, on the rock itself. And he didn't think it was right that um, we should be damaging something or he should be damaging something that gave him so much joy. So, you know, the rocks that brought him so much pleasure, he was, he was actually damaging them. So that was kind of the idea of, um, that was where it started thinking about the environment and, and our impact on it. And from there, it's kind of, it's the backbone of what we do. And we've, it's developed and developed over the years. And now we actually donate to, to grassroots environmental groups. And you can see here on the slide, in the past 30 years, we've donated nearly $100 million um, across the world to, to environmental groups, which is an amazing part of my job. I actually get to decide who we, who we grant to in the UK, which is a, a very unusual thing to do when you work in marketing. Um, back in the 90s, we came up with our first, first mission statement, um, which reflected these core values of environmentalism. And some of you may be familiar with this. You may have heard it before. Um, so the mission statement had three parts. First was build the best product. Second was cause no unnecessary harm. And the third was use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Um, I could do an entire hour long talk on this um, mission statement. It's, there's a lot to it. Um, and some of you may have questions, some of you may have heard it before, but the, the order of it is, is very 
um, considered. Um, so yeah, build the best product is, um, that is deliberately first because we believe good product that lasts a long time is the best thing that you can do for the environment. You know, product that falls apart, um, you have to throw it away within a couple of years. That's that's really adding to the um, adding to the problem, and then yeah, cause no unnecessary harm. Um, again, you could dissect that for quite a long time, but the wording is very deliberate again because by making anything, we're causing harm. But if we as a brand can make it in the best way possible, um, then we feel like we're we're at least trying to to make a positive impact. And I'll come on to the final bit um, on the next in a couple of slides time, because um, that's quite an interesting part of what we do. But we actually changed our mission statement, um, which in 2018 which was quite frustrating to me because it took me forever to learn that last little bit because it's not as catchy as the first two bits um, and our, our new mission statement is we're in business to save our home planet which is a very bold statement um, it was actually quite controversial either internally um, but the old mission statement is still core to what we do um, as well and I'll talk about that in a little bit but if we could just move on to the next slide Martina before we do anything else, um, now, oh, can we go back one? Martin? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> So before we do anything else, um, we were just interested, Martina and myself, if any of you have actually had anything repaired either by ourselves or by someone else um, anywhere. So apparently you guys are all pretty up there with technology and you know how to annotate the slides. So if you are familiar with that and you wanna annotate somewhere on this slide, just anywhere, just maybe what you've had repaired, whether it was at a Patagonia event, um, so some of you may have seen us at Kendall Mountain Festival. I'm going to see if I can do this as a, in case you're not familiar with the annotate option, if you go up to the top at view options and click on it, it says annotate and you can write on the screen. So, oh, flea sip. Here we go. Someone's on it already. Great. I don't have to demonstrate. I've got a heart. Hopefully that means someone's had something repaired. Um, repaired well. <laughs> yeah. So a flea sip. We've got a tick. Someone else has had it. I think someone might be trying to write zip that yeah a classic always zips synthetic jacket Kendall ah oh, that would have been Martina then she would have been or maybe Sasha as well self-repair waterproofs with tape excellent this is this is all stuff we like to see any more for any more maybe not but these are great and these are actually um everything when it needs it perfect that's what we like that is a tense jacket patches amazing um patches another tick this is fantastic well this is a really i mean this is a really good lead in to uh to what i'm going to say next but particularly what martina will say as well um holes in down jacket a real classic and actually a very easy one to uh to do as well cool martina if we can go on to the next slide yeah so, um so that's amazing to see and leads us like i say nicely into this quick slide on warm wear so Repair for us is a huge thing, and I've got the, the statement at the top there, repair is a radical act, which is kind of our catchphrase from Warnware, um, which was coined by our now ex-CEO, Rose Macario. She actually left us about a month ago, which is a real shame, but she's an amazing, amazing woman. Um, and I remember when I first read that statement, I was like, is it? But actually, the more I think about it, the more it is, because, okay, it seems like you guys are pretty up there with repairs, but actually, people don't really repair stuff anymore. It used to be a real thing. Um, but now we live in a very disposable um, society and people do just they throw things away really quickly. So actually repairing stuff is pretty radical. Um, repairing items keeps them in play for longer and can significantly reduce the carbon waste and water footprint of an item. Um, there's again so much we could go into here and I could I could talk for hours on this topic. Um, but it's even just keeping an item in play for another two years can reduce the, all of those um, footprints by about 70%, um, which is incredible when you think about it, that, that makes a real difference on, on our environment. And if you're interested in this kind of thing, I, I'd, I'd recommend going to look up some statistics because um, clothing waste is one of the worst things that we do um, as human beings. It's really shocking the amount, that, like the tons of material that goes to, to waste every year. Um, so Warnware was kind of our direct response to this. Um, and it's a reference to our third part of the old mission statement, which is use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. So we're using our business and the resources we have available to us to go out and talk to people about and how they can 
how they can use it and, and the difference it can make. Um, we've repaired our clothing for free as a brand. If you have a pat oh, excuse me, if you have an item of Patagonia clothing, we will repair it for free forever for as long as we possibly can. So I used to work in customer service. I used to deal with repairs. We used to get people sending back 25 year old jackets. We'll happily fix a zip on that for you for free and send it back to you. That is something we always do for our own product. But then, you know, we realized there was, we could talk to more people by going out and fixing other stuff as well. So back in 2013 in the US, we started doing the worn wear tours, which is where we go around in with a vehicle. Um, in the States, they converted like some old sort of pickup trucks. We had some uh, sprinter vans in the UK. I can see Martina smiling. She's sat in the back of a sprinter van on a, on a sewing machine many a time. Um, and now in Europe, we also have our little wooden house, which you can just see a small picture of on the side there. Um, and so we tour around and we go to people and we've got an amazing setup with like industrial sewing machines. Um, We've even managed to go and fix wetsuits and technical waterproofs and everything we possibly can. Um, and we've been doing that in, in the UK for about four years. Um, and when we started, we were lucky enough to come across the wonderful Martina Gilbert, um, who has been with us ever since and is our absolute hero when it comes to um, comes to Walmart because she can, there is, I, I would dare to say there is nothing Martina can't. <laughs> um, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, the uh, the most important thing and that that's why something like today is amazing is that education is key and actually just telling people that you can you can fix more than you think you can and you don't always need um us to be there so i'm going to hand over to you martina um who will tell you more about her experiences with warmer hi everyone um i hope you're all doing okay i hope you're all well and um, thank you becky um yeah so basically i'm just going to give you an insight today um just all things worn wear, everything that I've experienced with regards to worn wear, how I got involved with worn wear in the first place. Um, and I'm going to be explaining, um, uh, well, talking about our most common repairs that we get, um, things that people believe are beyond repair, which is not always true, but you know, like Becky said before, education is important with regards to this subject area. Uh, zip fixing, I've put zip fixing 101 because there's so many little hacks and tricks to fixing zip. So, um, and I've learned the hard way on this. So yeah, um, repairing waterproof gear and how you can repair your own gear. Um, and as Cressida said at the beginning, I've just put a little note to say that questions will be answered at the end as well. So you're going to be hearing my voice for a little while now. Um, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end. So introduction is I'm Martina Gilbert, as Cressida said earlier, um, I am Patagonia's UK worn wear seamstress. So there are other seamstresses uh, around Europe and, and obviously in America as well. Um, and I started doing worn wear in April 2016. Um, and how it came about was that um, at Lisa, who is the Enviro marketing coordinator, she happened to know somebody that I'd previously worked with uh, at a company called Bench Clothing. It's quite old Bench. I don't know if, <laughs> don't know if people remember Bench Clothing, but um, I was um, a garment technologist there and, and I happened to know somebody uh, that knew Lisa um, and Lisa had uh, sort of put a bit of a statement out there, said that they were looking for a seamstress. Um, you know, and, and at that moment I would just been made redundant as well. So when Lisa contacted me and you know she's like you know we're doing this tour and it's around the UK and we need a seamstress and I was a bit like I don't know what I'm getting myself in for but yeah you know I've got nothing to lose really and um, so that's how it came about really um so it's been just over four years now which is amazing you know it's been an amazing experience so far um I didn't know what I was getting myself in for, but it's been an amazing experience. <laughs> and uh, I'm from Manchester, born and raised. So I've always lived in Manchester. Um, and on the next slide, I've included a map for everyone to pinpoint where the locations where they are, because I think it's quite nice to see where everyone's sort of tuning in from today. So I'm going to go in there. And if you can use your annotations again, um, and you can maybe try and pinpoint i think it's it is quite small but yeah oh somebody was very quick on that then <laughs> that's brilliant let's have a look and see
Oh, I think we've got somebody who is, I think I need to make it a little bit bigger. Just a second. Oh, I can see more arrows coming on. <laughs> some people have put some arrows at the side. Does that mean you're off, off the grid? <laughs> off the grid of the UK? No, that was me. Was it? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everyone. That's fine. That's fine. Brilliant. I think somebody's put their name in there as well. Jane. That's excellent. <laughs> So yeah, we've got we've got um, obviously got a few people from from different areas, which is always nice to see. Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide, and again, we're going to do some annotations. So getting you all involved here. Um, one of the things that I think is really important is educating yourself about what can be repaired. I I love a challenge, as Becky knows, <laughs> and one of the things that I think is that you know it can be repaired you've just got to know how so i've put some um names of of different things i don't know if it's some of them might be a bit well i think in fact i think it's easy enough to, for everyone to to grasp what they are and um, so i don't know if you want to just put like a tick or a little you know dot or something next to um which ones you think can actually be repaired um and then maybe what you think can't be repaired as well so you can put a cross next to this I see a lot of green ticks which is what i like to see <laughs> that's brilliant brilliant right okay so somebody's put a cross next to the zipper teeth um which is not true they can actually be repaired it does just depend on what type of zip it is which i'll get into that a little bit later on so brilliant right okay so we're gonna um move on and oh <laughs> we've got a cross there. um the most common questions asked um it's not i wouldn't really say it's necessarily questions it's more you know oh i've got this i don't know if you can fix it um or it's just a zip i'm not sure if you can fix it but it's never just a zip okay i really have to like stress on this because zips are so complex as you can imagine i do feel like zips are also one of the most um i say challenging things to fix because it's knowing how to do it and we did learn oh, yeah i say we because we're a team when we do warm wear um you know we did learn the hard way with with zips um the first tour that we did complete i was complete amateur as in you know my background is is very technical um you know pattern making making garments you know dealing with factories and everything from literally the whole production process so understanding that is one thing but then having something that you're dealing with you know hands-on um and also with the public as well i always feel that you know there is a, a, an ex, it's managing people's expectations um and also you, you've only got a certain amount of time to to do it in especially when you're doing a tour sometimes you'd be you know you, the location would be for one day maybe a couple of days max so you've got to work within the time that you've been given and then obviously you know you move on to a different location so you just need to be getting things repaired um you know and and repaired well but quickly and our first tour we took out a lot of zips we took a lot of zips out of jackets um and things that we found out later on down the line and i'll be honest i think maybe even a year later as in like on the next tour that we did that actually you don't always need to take the zips out. I think this was actually Becky's moment of like a light bulb moment that changed our lives forever. <laughs> because um, we, we realized that with zippers, you know, a lot of the time, the actual zip runner, the, the pull, um, sometimes the reason why they might, uh, you know, it doesn't zip up properly, it's, it could be too tight or it's too loose. And all you need to do is get pliers and just either compress the zip slider or just open it up a little bit and expand it so that it will run smoothly again and we have repaired so many jackets and fleeces 
by doing this and you know people are amazed at the same way we were amazed when we we discovered it um but you know people were so amazed like, oh my god like you know it, it's done it's just done you know and also um patagonia in the worn wear van um they have the small like components and stuff for fixing we do have a lot of the zip spare zip runners um that we can actually by going to the top of the zip you can take off the zip stuff at, that's at the top uh, take the old one off as in like if it's completely battered um you know and just and pop a new one on you know look for the right size and and pop a new uh, runner on and again you know you've actually fixed a whole product that can you know you can wear again you can use it again just as you were before um yeah and then you can you know it's it's a quick job it's it's actually something that other people can do and i don't need to necessarily just focus on that and i can do some of the bigger jobs um when we're doing our repairs and stuff so yeah it's you know it's such a good it was a very good educational moment for us because it's helped us to you know extend the life of so many people's products which is brilliant um, another co uh, common question that we get um, is about like tears and holes on soft shells and down jackets. Um, I've probably in a few feathers, which is not nice because you get the rips and you're trying to fix it and all the feathers are coming out. A lot of people use uh, duct tape to just obviously stop it from getting any worse or from losing the down. Um, which is great the only thing is oh, it's great for like a temporary fixture um but then you get a lot of glue that tends to stick to the product afterwards um but it can be repaired you know there's always a way to do it um and we tend to use tenacious tape which i will come to in a moment um which is really good because it's it's fused on and then it kind of sort of it doesn't disappear but it's it's very good in terms of like it's not very visible so it doesn't stand out so it's a nice clean finish once it's done um so moving on to reconstruction which is another repair method um i feel like i've done some really crazy reconstruction jobs and like i said before i do love a challenge um so for me you know i, I mean the, uh, obviously the pictures that you can see i think this is one of the the best examples um this gentleman brought into the a Patagonia store in Manchester. We had a warm wear event, and I think he's. I can't remember if the dog tore the jacket, and it, obviously it's just ripped, completely ripped. Um, you know, all the way through, and it's a waterproof as well. And I think he just thought, oh yeah, you know, like let's see if you can fix this. Or in fact, he actually said to me, <laughs> you can use it to repair other stuff if you like, you know, like cut patches out of it and, you know, it's completely damaged and, you know, and I was like, I can fix that, <laughs> you know, and he was just sort of like, really? Uh, I think everyone was a bit like, mm, she's a bit crazy. I don't think she's going to be able to do it. But because of my background in terms of um, doing patterns and, you know, knowing how things are constructed, um, I was able to um you know put the pieces together and sew them together uh, and then use a uh, waterproof gore tape to seal it back down again and give him his jacket back you know so it, i know he was obviously a bit like oh my god how did you do it but it's brilliant for me to be able to do that for somebody on something that they thought was beyond repair you know um so yeah it was it was great and you know that's just one of the the many examples of of what we've done um and just going back to the zips as well um there are times when you do have to take the zip out you know and when we go to kendall um i literally dedicate myself to zips for three days because the, uh, the other seamstress, Sasha, that comes along with us, um, she hates doing zips, which I can't blame her. You know, it is a bit of a, a faff at times. And to even just sort of unpick the zip from the, the product is a lot, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of time and I'm confident to do it. And I know I can do it quite quickly and I can do it well. And I think that's the main thing because you want to give somebody their product back knowing that you're confident that yeah everything's done you know how you want it to be done and they can go and you know use it for another how many years so um like i was saying about the hacks and the like, little tricks and stuff like that as well um it's just knowing how you know 
I don't know if anybody's ever had a, a zipper that has been too tight where it's like it's not um it's almost like squeezing the teeth and it's not going up with ease which it should do um that's a, a plier job just small pair pliers just to sort of loosen the slider a little bit um you know so that then you can obviously just you know zip it up a lot more easier and then uh if it's the teeth are sort of if you're zipping up and then the teeth are coming open then it's too loose so then you'd need to compress um them down um as well and yeah i think the zipper know-how um i think maybe we should just do a whole session on zippers because <laughs> it's just it's so for me it's so important for people to know that no like don't throw it away it's not ruined we can actually you know do something so it's it's great it's great to be able to um you know to extend the life of, of a product that way uh, and you know if you do need to put a new zip in then it's uh, some are easier than others when you've got a maybe like a down jacket that's got like baffles and things in the actual jacket you know you have to make sure everything's lined up those are the ones that take longer because you you know everything has to be well for me everything has to be perfect <laughs> So, you know, just doing like making sure everything's lined up and, you know, pinning everything down so that, um, you know, it just looks like it did when the person bought it. And, and that's the um, it's not the main thing in terms of like aesthetics, but you want it to for them to feel good again and, you know, and be able to get the use out of it as well. Um, and one of my little hacks that I'm going to share with you now, top secret. Well, it's not now, <laughs> but um, is knowing how to get into garments to repair them. So I think a lot of people were sort of like astonished <laughs> by one of the little hacks that I've got, um, which is where you can go in through the sleeve. So if you've got a product that's got some maybe a lining, um, let's say a coat, for instance, that's got a lining and you've got a, a like a rip maybe on sleeve something that needs stitching up um i don't always like to do the repair on the outside because you can't always do the best job i don't always find it to be the neatest thing um to do and sometimes you just need to get into the you know to go into the product so you can actually if you look in um you don't have to do it now but maybe when you go away you can look in something that's that's lined you will actually find that there's a little row of stitching inside one of the sleeves um every all the other stitching you won't be able to see but there'll be a part of stitching that's just sort of on the outside of the sleeve lining and that's where you go in basically that's your um the the part where you can undo it and you can get right inside the product you can fix the problem and then you can stitch it back up again and no one will ever know <laughs> so it's really good to know um because if you want something that is you know maybe you do care obviously a lot about the appearance of it then that's the way to do it because you you work from the inside of a garment for the most part um you know when you're uh, doing sewing and, and construction and stuff so i think it's important to know that as well just to know that you don't have to do um you know if you didn't want to see like stitching on the outside i mean some people they don't care they're just happy that it's fixed um but i think it's nice if you've got something that's quite clean cut you know to be able to just go in um you know fix what you need to fix and then come back out and then you can literally just stitch the the lining up and because it's in the on the inside of the product as well you know it, it's not seen so it's um it's a nice finished job um here we've got different types of materials um i'm going to talk a little bit about waterproof when we first started doing the worn wear tour uh we were I didn't have that much knowledge of waterproof. Waterproof wasn't particularly my specialist area in terms of what I'd done before. Um, and once you start stitching, as in machine stitching on, you know, on waterproof or even with needle and thread, it compromises the ability of it being waterproof because you're putting holes in it, basically. Um, so in on our first one, we actually used a lot of tenacious tape or tear aid as some people might know it um, which is where we cut the little patches out and we um to cover you know the the affected area and then we would put like a, a cotton something cotton down and then we would apply heat just a bit of steam with an iron we just apply that on um, and that actually fuses on to the material which is great and it does work on waterproof however it's not the best thing to do 
um on waterproof it it does work i'm not you know saying that it doesn't work but there is a better way to do it um it is a lot more technical um but it's really good to know because obviously with regards to obviously fusing something onto you know that's waterproof it will hold for you know a very long time um but i was actually privileged to go to germany um that was through patagonia as well they invited us um and the other warm wear seamstresses uh, from around Europe, which was really nice because we got to actually meet everybody. Um, and we went to their Gore-Tex facility, which was in Munich, and it was brilliant. You know, they basically taught us how to um, how to properly repair waterproof products, um, which was, you know, it was amazing to get an insight and the tapes that they use that are, um, you know, got quite a high like adhesive, but rightly so, so that everything can be fused on. And, you, you know, once you've fixed it, it's, it's better than new because, you you know, the reconstruction aspect of it is, is brilliant. So um, as you can see in that picture, you can see like a heat press there. Um, this was actually the jacket that was that I was talking about before that the the gentleman had brought into for us to um, use it as scraps. <laughs> um, you know that I was actually reconstructing there, and the tape that I you can see in that picture as well is is gore tape, um, and they were kind enough. To, I think Becca, did they give us gore tape in the end? we buy it directly from them well, that's what i mean yeah we, yeah we yeah so we we were able to get that which i don't know if it's how easy it is to get hold of to be honest but um you know it's brilliant and we've done so many more waterproof repairs because of this knowledge that we're given you know especially at kendall you know kendall we get a lot of waterproof repairs to do um and sometimes zips as well you know they've been in a waterproof product you you can stitch on it but then you would have to seal it with like Gore-Tex tapes because obviously you don't want that uh, the waterproof aspect of it to be compromised as well um so yeah that was that was a brilliant experience for me and it really helped um I think it helped us progress on our tours and just warn wear that we do because we just had that knowledge to say actually yeah we can fix that or you know if sometimes you get a waterproof and it's um it's delaminating a little bit inside. There are different thicknesses of the uh, tapes that we've got um, and some of the, the sort of patches that, you know, that come in different sizes and we can actually start to, um, you know, to fuse some of the, the tapes on so that it's, you know, you've not got like a patch on your shoulder that's just getting drenched every time you go out. And, you know, it was, yeah, it was really good to, to have an insight. Um, and it's just something that you never forget. Once you know it, you know that, oh, yeah, actually, we can fix that. You know, we can do that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if, you know, if anyone's actually got any um, any waterproofs that have been compromised because of delamming, but look out for us on our next tour, whenever that will be. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully we can help because these and um, these products as well, you know, I used to think, oh, you know, they're so expensive. They cost a lot of money, but understanding how they're constructed now, <laughs> that you know that really tells me why because it's a very very technical aspect of how they're put together um and the way everything's sealed in um you know it's it's really does what it, it says it's going to do and the, the worst thing i think is if something is waterproof or supposed to be waterproof and then it's it's been compromised for whatever reason um so yeah it's it's it was brilliant it was a great experience um and I'm glad that we've done it because now we can repair a lot more, which is great. Um, thicker fabrics, sometimes a bit of a struggle, depends what it is. Leather, usually hand stitching. Um, we do use industrial machines when we do our warm wear, um, heavy duty. Um, but that being said, we're still limited somewhat in terms of what we can take in that moment on that tour or at that event um leather is something that can be fixed depending on what it is uh shoes no <laughs> we don't i don't think i don't think i've ever repaired i think i repaired like a popper on a shoe like a press stud um 
but again that was our first worn wear tour so it was like oh yeah you know i'll fix this i'll fix this and you kind of get a bit fix happy without always thinking it through but with the experience that's come over the years um we do sort of tend to say no to fixing shoes it's not that they can't be fixed um but it's just in terms of what we've got the the like equipment and stuff that we've got uh, at that time um rucksacks can be fixed i have fixed a few rucksacks but we've had a few issues of some of the stuff that's in turn like inside the actual products of a rucksack let's say for instance the strap sometimes the strap might just look like oh it's just a strap but there might be something else in within like that strap that they've used to thicken it up and make it stronger um i've got a phobia of needles breaking on the machine <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why but I hate it when a needle breaks it just yeah um and I've had quite a few needle break like break in with um with the rucksack so we tend to if it's something that can just be hand stitched like quickly to be done I think sometimes we're happy to do that um we we don't tend to sort of advertise that we're going to fix rucksacks uh, just for that reason they're a lot more heavy duty and we don't always have the needles on the machine for that um and it's just a bit more complex in terms of like going into straps and stuff like that and you know the the time that it would take for us to sort of like take that apart and then put it back together and then to find that actually we can't put it you know it's just we we tend to have a look we'll sort of like have a look at it um assess you know the situation if it's something that could be you know hand stitched um if it's just like a tear and we could just do a quick patch even we'll be happy to do that um but a lot of the time thicker fabrics can be more challenging in terms of the facilities that we've got when we do um our warm wear events and stuff but we can always give advice in terms of how you know it could be fixed we won't ever just be like no sorry bye it's never you know it's never a case of that um it's just more of you know educating people to maybe go and have a try themselves or we'll we'll obviously give them information in terms of what we can actually do for them so my next slide is how should you get something repaired so i always say give it a go yourself um you'd be amazed at what you can actually do um it's a feel good i think as well if you've got something that's got a hole in it and you know it, i mean i've got a lot of things that I need repairing i'm always repairing everyone else's stuff but you know it's really good to give it a go yourself because sometimes you know you might surprise yourself and you'd be amazed at what you can actually do i know that um on our patagonia manchester the instagram there are some videos of like little tips and tricks of how to do repairs i think like tenacious tape um you know just doing like patches holes uh, i think there's a bit about the zips as well so you and you know obviously other um platforms as well youtube have so many tutorials of you know what you can do so if you if you do fancy having a, a giving it a go then by all means do so because i think like i said you'd be amazed at what you can actually do um and how you can you know just extend the life of, of what you've got because i know for me when i buy something i buy it to keep you know i want to keep it forever or for as long as i can um or maybe even you know pass it down later on so i think it's great to be able to just say right you know what i'm going to give it a go it doesn't have to be brilliant i think the idea of the fact that yes i fixed it um that is what we push for really and try to encourage people to do so um yeah that would be my first um advice piece of advice if not next you could take it to a seamstress if it's too big a job um or something scary like a zip <laughs> um you know you can always take it to a seamstress or look out for one of our warm wear events we'd be happy to help and the next thing is to send it back to a manufacturer um i don't know obviously how every manufacturer works but it's always worth getting in contact with them if there's an issue with something because you just never know what they might say to you in terms of you know you can send it back to to them um and they'll they'll fix it or you know you just don't know so it's always good to maybe just get in contact with them uh, and find out and then if not then i didn't put recycle because i just thought it's such a wide sort of spectrum recycle isn't it that word um but upcycle which you know you can maybe use it for something else um you know it's 
I've had it where people have made, I don't know, like a, a tote bag, you know, out of a, a jacket or something, you know, because it's just the fact that it's like, okay, it's completely battered and, you know, um, but I really still like it. I want to keep it going. And, and they've made, um, you know, they've made a, a bag out of it. And, you know, even in the industry that I've, I've worked in previously as well, um, doing like dresses and, and bridal and things like that. We have a lot of people that tend to use, their old wedding dresses for something else like a christening gown or you know for their child or you know or we, we want to make like some cushion covers out of this and you know but it's nice to see that you know whatever was once there just sort of gathering dust might have been a bit damaged they've actually got the idea that we want to keep the the life of that fabric going so they you know they come to me and they ask me to to make it into something else which you know i think is brilliant as well but always give it a try yourself like i said you never know you might surprise yourself so um yeah so i think now we can um take some questions if anybody's got any questions i am open to hearing everyone martina there were some questions on the chat from a couple okay. of people so i'll just pause in case some of those you know people would like to uh, unmute and yes. ask them themselves we'll okay just... no problem Yeah, I have a, a quick question. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is Mike. Um, hi, Mike. I, hi. I've got a um, Gore-Tex jacket. It's a Canadian make. Um, okay. forget which make it is. And it has a lining. And I've got a small tear on a sleeve, about halfway along the sleeve. Um, right. Not, not a big tear. And I think what you were saying earlier, you would would you try and repair that from the inside? I think the lining is okay, it's just the outer uh, Gore-Tex material itself. Yeah, um, so you've got a tear, is it sort of like a clean tear, not a hole? Um, it's a bit more of a, a bit more of a small hole really. Right, okay, um, I mean you could do, yeah, I think I personally would, you know, open the lining, um, and with one of these, I'm just going to show you because I'm sat right here. Is this? It's like a seam ripper. I don't know if you've ever uh -huh. seen this before, <laughs> but um, it's really good for just opening like the stitches. Um, uh -huh. And then you can just go in and obviously on the sleeve that you've uh, where the tear is. Um, yeah. And then I don't know if you've heard of of like tenacious tape or tear aid. I hadn't before today. Right. No. Okay. That's great. We're learning. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm so, now feeling more tenacious. <laughs> yes. that's brilliant that's brilliant um but that's that's what it's all about isn't it and i think if if it is a small hole what you might want to do is um just get a little like a piece of uh tenacious tape um and then you could also put some on the back so that would be the inside where you've gone in through the sleeve mm -hmm. um if it is a hole where obviously some of the fabrics come away you might want to do it on both sides does that make sense so you yep. still do it yep. on the outside but yep. you'd also do it on the inside as well sure that would make it stronger you, yeah it'd make yes. it stronger and also just rather because it, when it's just a clean sort of like a slice let's say a slice you could just potentially just do that from the outside and you could fuse it on but if there's a hole it's it's and a, with it being a uh, Gore-Tex as well it's probably better for you to actually go in and do it on both sides um yeah. and the thing to do I think as well would be to uh we we say get an iron but always cover the product don't put the iron directly on the product okay because it'll be game over so you just need yeah. to cover it with like maybe just like a, a tea towel or something um yes, and just yes. apply a little bit of steam and that will just fuse it down and you'll be good to go lovely thank you very much you're welcome you're welcome Thanks. i think have we got some more questions well I'll tell you what i'm gonna read a couple if that's okay from yeah let's do it let's go um please if you wrote this question and please interject um you know if if you'd like to so there was one that says um normal cotton or poly thread and i think that was related to it might have been related to waterproof fabric um, right so there's a question to that thread which threads yes um i always use poly threads um 
unless you know you've got something really delicate and it's something else but they are for me the ones that are the most durable they're stronger than cotton threads cotton threads tend to get a little bit sort of um not bobbly but a little bit they look a bit worn sometimes whereas the poly thread it's a lot cleaner it's a lot stronger um you can still get different thicknesses of the thread um itself um but it's the poly thread just it works with more materials um and definitely with regards to if something is waterproof um you would want to do the the poly thread first if you are stitching something up and then you can cover over it with you know like the tenacious tape or if you had gore tape or something um because yeah it just i, I feel that it's a stronger thread um and it's for me personally it's always been it's been reliable so yeah i definitely go with that okay uh um, there was another related to that was what type of needle on a sewing machine? Um, depends what sewing machine it is. However, on an industrial, I would always use a 70s, 80s or 90s round point needle because the 70s is the smaller one. So if you want obviously to be really discreet a lot smaller holes that's what you would go for um 90s is is obviously on the bigger scale so if you had something maybe a bit thicker you would go with the 90s um because it's just you know something that you that's going to be able to handle uh, a thicker fabric um i'm not sure about uh, domestics as such because there are a lot of different types of domestics usually for industrials they have they the, like each make like a brother or a juki would have their needle but it comes in like 70s 80s 90s uh, round point and th yeah that's what i definitely recommend um for leather and thicker fabrics you can actually get leather needles you can get stretch for jersey and you can get denim as well so it's quite a there's a world of needles out there <laughs> um but those are the ones that i we use when we do our events um and even myself when i'm at home i tend to use those ones as well okay um thank you martina um then uh related to that were other tips um for working with waterproof and keeping it fabric I'm not sure if there's anything else that you'd add to what you've already said. Uh, as in like keeping it so that it's in yeah, the best condition yeah. or? Strong and waterproof, yeah. Um, well, obviously they are designed for the outdoor world. Um, it's keeping it clean is important, you know, um, and we always get these questions, especially when we do like Kendall, um, you know, because people have sometimes even just been out and, you know, they're, they're like, they're, oh, it's got dirty and stuff like that. And I think it's important to clean it because once the dirt starts to set in, it can compromise um, the material, basically. And, um, you know, some, some materials have certain like oils in them and things like that. And, you know, you don't want the dirt to take over that so then it ends up being compromised and i think there's a product that they use is it granger's becky yeah so yeah. I, just to add to this um from our point of view as a manufacturer and also in terms of like keeping your gear going for a long time cleaning it is one of the single best things you can do um and i know people are i've worked in the outdoor industry for quite a long time and um, i've worked for retailers and, and you know i've had this conversation a lot people are obviously quite nervous about particularly with a technical jacket that's cost quite a lot of money people can be quite nervous about washing them but we for patagonia we recommend the grangers products um in the uk we also have nick wax which probably a lot of you are familiar with yeah as long as you follow the manufacturer's instructions, which should be very clear on the inside labels, you should be fine. And follow the instructions on the Grangers or Nick Wax bottles as well. Um, particularly for waterproofs, because sometimes certain products, so the Grangers, you sometimes need to um, tumble dry on a very low heat so that the, the waterproofing retakes. Um, but just take your time check if you're not sure get in touch with them the, the manufacturer of your product as well um, and just ask them for their advice because they should be, they should do that if they've got a good customer service team um but yeah, that's one of the best things you can do same with down jackets and down jackets are terrifying and i hate washing mine um but as, as long as you've got a tumble dryer and if you don't find someone who does ask them if you can borrow it um you, you can look after them and it will really prolong the life of the product on a low heat on a, always on a low heat 
don't, don't we've oh, we've seen some shockers although saying that much one of the best repairs i've ever seen martina do um a lady melted her down gilet in um in the tumble dryer because she had it on a high heat and martina patched up and this woman was she just thought it was the same thing she thought it was dead she was gonna she just said you know she donated it didn't she yeah sure. she, she said um <laughs> martina i i always know with martina i see the look in her eye and i know it means that she's gonna repair it instead <laughs> Um, and she made this, like this woman, a one of a kind gilet in the end, basically, because she patched it up with lots of different um, patches and it looked amazing. And this woman was so excited. So yeah, it was yeah, good. There, there was, even if things go disastrously wrong, there are still things you can do. But yeah, always a low heat on the tumble dryer. Definitely. Um, just on the chat, a couple of people were asking about, you know, where to purchase tape for waterproofing and there have been some really helpful responses from people buying on Amazon and eBay, you know, so it looks like online rather than from a, you know. Yeah, you can find, so um, I certainly know Ellis Brigham and Cotswold, Snow and Rock, those kinds of places sell quite small kind of almost like in the field repair kits but they tend to have quite a small amount of tape in them if you go to amazon in particular when i've been preparing for worn wear events and i've had to do an emergency buy of loads of tenacious tape um i always go to amazon you can usually buy like rolls of it or um it also comes in sort of square or circular patches which are really helpful and actually a top tip from myself uh having done a lot of tenacious tape patching because it's the only thing that i can do um without martina's close and darning <laughs> and darning, <laughs> darning is my other skill but with tenacious tape when you're um when you create your patch so um you know you'll sort of work out how much you need don't if you're cutting like a rectangle or a square don't leave the corners square always round them off because basically and it's the same even if you use um duct tape something like that yeah you want to round off the corners because a square corner will peel whereas a round corner won't um and yeah that's that's kind of top tip i also <laughs> i'm a bit obsessed with neat tenacious tape patches and so i always draw around something circular because a circular patch is even better um basically so we tend to have a lot of collections of coins coins yeah <laughs> lurking around in the warm wear kit because i always draw around them but that's that would be my top tip if you're if you're doing these kinds of repairs okay. um thank you uh dorian had a question uh which was saying that they were fighting with a hooded uh, peak wire um and advice about getting that back into place or do they need a replacement wire unit so i'm not sure if dorian um would like to add to that but that's about a hooded peak wire um well we we can fix those i mean we have done you know in the past um it's always sort of a bit difficult if you can't see it so to speak but just from my experience um before yeah it's it's something's obviously given and it's come through and it's i'm, I'm thinking it's maybe it's come out um if they're yeah, fighting yeah. with it, yeah, it, <laughs> um, it oh it, hi there hi <laughs> It's completely moved down um, the hood, so it's kind of completely lopsided. It's only like on half the hood at the moment, so yeah. Right, so it's moved, yeah, so that's, I can imagine that's really annoying as well. Um, so it's it's not actually come out, but it's still inside, is that right? Yeah. Right, so you would probably need to, so whatever it was in that was holding it on the other side has probably just wear and tear, it might have just come out of there. Um, you'd probably need to go into it um, or get somebody, I don't know if, you know, to to go into it um is this this is a waterproof is it yeah right yeah. okay um again when you're going into a waterproof you're probably going to need something waterproof to repair it with after that as well um but i mean if you wanted to you could always have a look at it yourself and maybe just assess it and see um but you'd need to get in to be able to bring the wire back um, to straighten it across it probably doesn't need a new wire to be honest as long as the wire's not obviously not broken because if it is broken then you know that might be a, a different situation um you can you know you can buy sort of wires and things like that as well um and you can always because they're not they're not super thick you can always cut them down to size if you were to you know uh, to buy one but you just need to find out how it's come out of the other side where it's come away from but in order to do that you would have to go into it um if you did if you wanted to challenge yourself and um and you know and have a look and see um 
you might need to do something sort of like stitching uh, inside, maybe a bit of hand stitching. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've got a machine um, to to sort of get that wire to stay again. Um, with waterproofs as well, you know, I like a good sturdy repair <laughs> reconstruction. So I would uh, get some tape and um, put some tape over the wire as well after I'd like been able to stitch it down. And then in terms of uh, stitching that panel back up that you've actually gone into in the first place, you could use tenacious tape as well to, you know, to cover mm -hmm. over if you have to stitch that up, to cover that over as well. Um, so it can be done, you know, if, if you don't feel confident, I mean, even if you give it a try and then, you know, who knows, but if not, you know, keep hold of it by all means and then, you know, I don't know if we ever do an event or something or, you know, we can maybe have a look at it for you there. Um, but it's definitely doable. It's I've, I've done it before and yeah, it can be done. Cheers. <laughs> Just to add to that, um, for anyone who's based in the UK, because we get asked, um, sometimes unfortunately we're kind of on a bit of a time limit, as Martina mentioned, at events. Um, sometimes because they are sort of mobile, we just don't have the, the facilities that we wish we could have. So there yeah. are a few groups in the UK um, who specialise in outdoor equipment repairs. Now, I forgot to mention um, at the very start, but our worn wear repairs are always free, um, yeah, yeah. which is the other pe reason they're quite popular, um, particularly at Kendall. But if you're willing to pay a little bit, then there is a group called Lancashire Sports Repairs and another group called Scottish Mountain Gear, I believe. And I'll type those names in the chat. They both specialise in outdoor repairs. Um, there is a charge for their services, but if you can't get to an event or us, if we're not doing one, because obviously at the moment we're also a bit more limited about what we can do, um, they do a really good job and they're, um, they're well worth looking into as well. I'll, I'll just type the names in the chat now so you have them for reference. Great, thanks Becky. Um, I'm sort of conscious of the time, we're near the end, but um, Lorcan asked, um, and I appreciate this may well be affected by our current situation, but any plans for a tour to Ireland in the future? Becky? This is my job. Um, so I, a large part of my job is planning, planning the tours. We were actually in Ireland on the west coast um, last year so it's such a shame we didn't we didn't get to see um at the moment uh, as i'm sure you're all very aware of the situation um we're not doing any any physical events so we were actually due to do a um tour this autumn in the uk that's currently on hold um but i have actually been speaking to someone in ireland um who was who is interested in us doing some more, more events so Go over there for one we'd probably go over for a, for a couple because it makes sense um, yeah. if you're based in the west coast i don't know how often you might get to dublin um but we do do warm wear events in the dublin store as well um and they're a great bunch of guys just to go and say hello to as well because they're fantastic um but currently no plans for any tours anywhere which is really disappointing and i hate it because i love doing warm wear but um <laughs> the best thing to do is keep an eye on predominantly our Instagram um, because we're currently boycotting Facebook for other various reasons. Um, but yeah, if you um, keep an eye on our Instagram, that tends to be where we announce a lot of like tours that are happening. Um, yeah, so, social media is the best place to keep up with us and hopefully we'll, we'll be back because we loved being in Ireland as well. They're a great team over there. We had a, we had a great time. So yeah, fingers crossed, it'll be soon. Okay, um, thank you. So just mindful of the time again. So I think um, if there are um, other questions, maybe if you can, uh, you know, send those in. Um, if we move uh, on to the next slide, I think there might be some uh, links that will be helpful for people. So if we can just nudge the slideshow, that will be lovely. Thank you. So hopefully, um, there's a bit more information here, as I say, or hopefully that, you know, we can add when we put the web, um, edit this and go on, put it online, we can add some more links uh, for people. Um, apart from that, uh, it's really time for me to say huge, huge 
thank you to Becky uh, and Martina for coming and thanks to everybody for your time this Wednesday morning and for asking those questions and we really hope um, that uh, we can all go away and look at our uh, clothing and our kits <laughs> and maintain it for longer um, and at some point in the future we'll maybe see, see some people whether at Kendall or other places um, so huge thanks do give us some feedback if we can just knock um, just to the final slides that will be great um, it's it's really helpful for us to know what you've liked and what we can do uh, better and finally we look forward to seeing you next week uh, and we have um, Dave and Laura Collins, Dave Evans uh, from the Brennan, Plassey Brennan, who are going to uh, talk about um, some of their research. Uh, so uh, if you haven't already uh, and you'd like to see that, please come along and we hope like this one that's been helpful and informative. So once again, just to end, huge thanks to Becky and Martina for that lovely presentation and um, we will look forward to seeing you next week. Many thanks, folks. Take care. Thank Bye. You.